Hi everyone. Um, I have to do this now, though I don't really have my thoughts together, but I've been waiting to have my thoughts together for a long time, and they don't seem to be coming together. Um, but I am I'm speaking to everybody, but I am speaking in particular to those who are feeling very alone right now. You not having anybody to talk to in your life about everything that is going on. And more in particular, I'm speaking to those who are alone. I have said weeks ago that I was going to be posting a video addressing some of the narcissism issues, my having received some comments lately from those who are alone. And to those who deal with being the scapegoat of a severely malignantly narcissistic family, and particularly to the guy that said, life sucks. I get it. I get it. And it's very hard to live something that not a lot of people understand. Now, there are people who have narcissistic parents. There are people who have malignantly narcissistic mothers and fathers, but we're all different. And Narcissism is on a continuum. And I do think that we grow up in a way that kind of creates a narcissism. It didn't have to be this way, but it is this way. And there is, there's a lot of people with the me only, don't care about anybody else. And as you continue on up the continuum of narcissism, the severity gets more and more, gets worse. Then you get into the pathological narcissism. That's hard enough. Then you get into the malignant narcissism. And then as you continue on up the continuum, the severity only gets worse. And the abuse and the neglect and the hate that your family has for you, being that scapegoat, when you have to live a life never knowing what love is. You live a life of just lie after lie after lie. Then you find out that many of the lies are about you. And then you have to live having your own family, destroying everything that you work for, destroying your reputation, lying about who you are, and then encountering time and time again people who don't understand and they look at you as if you're lying, they look at you as if you're exaggerating, they look at you as if, well, come on, the whole family, really? You must have done something to deserve living what you're living. And it's not true. And how do you live that? It's very difficult. It's really very difficult. And when you live it right on up to the very day you're an adult, you're getting older, your family wants nothing to do with you. Not only do they not want anything to do with you, they hate you so much they want you dead. Now, not a lot of people can understand that. And a lot of people do think that you're lying, that you're exaggerating, and you're not. 
And where do you find the people that fully understand that? I understand. Um, and while this is not going to be the video addressing a lot of those issues, I needed to say to you that I really do understand. And I understand what it feels like to live a life that has been utterly destroyed by those very people that are supposed to be loving you, caring about you, helping you. And they don't. And the shame that that brings upon you, um, you hear a lot of people, well, just forget about them and just go on and don't. <laughs> well, I will speak for myself. It's very hard to just go on when they so have destroyed your life that you literally, you go homeless, you end up in all these different places and you you've lost everything literally so you have no money you have no uh, home you have no familiar base you have no roots you have no connection you have nothing and you're expected to just go on but you don't even have the resources to pick yourself up. All of the resources that I knew are gone. All of the resources that I had up until 2012 to continue on. I had a life then. So I had an awful lot at my disposal to pick myself up, to feel better, to, you know, uh, just forget about things, to go off into the woods and walk my dogs and relax and and find joy. Well, you may not understand that, a lot of you who are listening to this, but you can be robbed of all of that, literally. And so you're left with nothing but this computer and so every day you're feeling, you're feeling it, you're feeling the destruction you can't get away from it because it's right here, you know, in your face. And you know, all of the things that I knew are gone. When living in Great Barrington, God, there were so many things that did bring me joy, cooking, cooking for friends, having dinner parties, friends just dropping over. Now these were the liberal progressives that I can't go back to. See, that's the problem with growing. <laughs> when you're the one who's growing and your entire social network is pretty much static, you know, they're just they're cemented in that lifestyle, refusing to open their minds and consider, you know, a, a, well, consider all of what we are facing, like the geoengineering and the weather modification and Agenda 2030, which is big in Great Barrington, Massachusetts, and you can't get anything started, you can't get anything organized because they just think that you're crazy. Um, you grow beyond them. And I did. I grew beyond what I always knew, which was that liberal democrat social network. And having, not being able to get back to Great Barrington, when you stay away for so long, you do get to a point where there's no turning back. 
but now you're living in an area that you don't really relate to these people. Well, here, where I'm living, I really don't relate. Um, it's very hard for me because I can't have I, I can't have any kind of decent conversation with anybody, but the conversation is always low. It's gossip. It's tearing other neighbors apart. It's there's there's a meanness in a lot of these people, and it's very hard for me to deal with that. Calling people names who happen to be someone who is, I think, on the autism spectrum, who is very nice. The woman just moved in and she's very, very nice. And then another neighbor calling her names and the neighbor, I have an elderly woman who has um, COPD, can barely walk has an awful lot of, um, I think, social service people coming to bring her to the doctors and things like that. And her granddaughter and great-grandchildren, they've been staying with her because the woman, her granddaughter, I don't know exactly what happened, domestic violence, so she left and has no place to go and won't return because she's got to keep the kids safe, but has no place to go. And these are very, very small studios. So there were four people living in this very tiny studio, which is not allowed. And a neighbor told, you know, on them. Another neighbor wants, because of this friction that they have, these personal, you know, problems that seem to um, seem to never end here. But one neighbor is out to get the other neighbor, and uh, you want to talk low. You know, you wake up to hearing these two elderly women screaming, fuck you, well, fuck you, well, kiss my ass, well, kiss my ass. And I'm like, oh my God, what the hell happened here? This is my life. So, a neighbor told on this neighbor with, you know, her granddaughter and great-grandchildren, and they have to be out. And if they're not out, then the elderly woman will lose her apartment, but they have nowhere to go. And the manager, of course, is Christian and comes over and just so mean in the delivery. Unnecessary, but this is what I'm surrounded with. So it's very hard to stay up, you know, when you don't have anything in your life that's keeping you up. And a lot of my affect right now, you know, if I could, if I could do the things that I so want to do, and if I could you know, do all of those things that people say that I should do. Oh, go relax. You don't relax when you've lost your life. You just don't. There's no relaxing. That's gone for you. You don't just go out, you know, you've been out of your life now, how long? Six years. And everything that you knew is gone. And you can't bring any of it back. It's just not it, it, it's just not accessible. You thought you could do dogs again. You kept trying and trying and trying. 
but you realize you're you're not who you used to be. You've changed. You understand all of those people who are walking lost, you know, those homeless people. You understand the the terrific grief of not having any roots, of not having anybody who cares about you. Now, I know that you guys care, okay, but you're not in my real life, and you know what I mean by care, okay? People who have families, even those who have dysfunctional families, you still have a family. You know, it's funny because I would talk to people, I would post videos, and we would connect on the um, narcissism, the mother who's a narcissist. And they would think that my experience was their experience. And I could tell just by how they would be talking. But then I would, then I would hear more, or I would go and meet them, and I'd realize that their life was nothing like mine, nothing. They still had their home. They still had their animals. They still had, they still lived in their familiar setting. And you would hear people and they would identify how they identified with me who has a family who literally does want me dead, and they're hoping to get that call one day. When I get no call at all, and the manipulations that my family did got me right here. And then I would go, and I, they would talk to their brother, they would talk to their mother, they, you know, and it was like, okay. Um, I'm talking to those who have no one. And I'm not even so much talking to those who have no one because family have died or, but there was love and care for you while they were around. I'm talking to those who have been destroyed and have no one. Literally. No one to rely on. No one that has your back. You're getting older. I'm talking to a couple of those who emailed me. Because based on what you've said in your emails, it sounds like your experience, your life experience, is similar to mine today. And while I don't sit, you know, with I'm scared and all of this, I do have those moments of terror. What happens? You know, I had a stroke. I'm limited in what I can do. I can't work. I am, I'm worse today than I've ever been. And a lot of that has to do with the stress and frustration that I feel every day. Um, stress does a number on you. And if you can't figure out how to get into better circumstances, you feel that every day. So between all of the poisons and the frequencies and the, and, and the stress, and then being alone all the time. And you do have those thoughts of, holy, <laughs> what am I gonna do if I get even worse? Um, I took a fall the other day and literally smashed my chin on concrete hard. And those are the moments when I go, Okay, 
if something really bad happens, like it hasn't already, um, there's no one I can call. There's no one, you know, that... One of my biggest fears is having, having the stroke that actually paralyzes you. You know, I've already found out what a stroke can do. The brain is a... It is truly amazing. And you can have a stroke in a particular area of the brain and it can cause so much, um, <laughs> so many problems on such a wide scale. So then I think to myself, Jesus, what do you do? My family has literally left me with this life. How, how could it be possible that people could be so cold, cruel, and so heartless? Well, what happens? When this is your life, and when prior to I didn't have to go no contact. They went no contact with me. But prior to that, I desperately needed their help because I had the stroke. And when you really need someone, like a mother or a sister or a brother, because you have found that you are in bad shape and if they don't come I have literally since 2002 did everything I possibly could to survive this to get myself out of this circumstance and I'm not going to go into the details but my family knew everything that I needed but instead of doing that, what they did was they did everything to ensure that I would never get back up and to ensure that I would be in the circumstance that I'm in now. See, my mother is a severe malignant narcissist. So the lie, the only bit of it that I know, is that I am a... I'm a violent, mentally ill drunk. Talk about projection of the narcissist. They are so incredibly violent, it's scary. So, they undercut me every which way. It's very important to learn what the narcissist can do to you. Because, well, I didn't have anybody else. I didn't have, you know, a spouse. I didn't have children. I didn't have anyone but my family. So when people would say no contact, it, how do I, I needed help. All right, so I did have to keep going back. And unfortunately, What that did was instill a shame in me that for many, many years I was capable of keeping at bay. Well, finally go homeless after a year of a manipulation that my mother sent me through. Now I've done an awful lot of work and an awful lot of thinking about what the hell have I gone through? What the hell did I just go through with this mother and, well, really her flying monkey is my brother, who is a sadistic narcissist. So, I know evil, 
But the problem was for me is that now you're going homeless. Now you're living in your car. And how do you keep yourself up? How do you keep telling yourself, look, it's not you, it's them? When then you're on YouTube and then you get an awful lot of people beating you down as well. So you keep going, you keep going, you do the best, you, you're But then you're encountering people that you're meeting. And then you find out that they're lying about you too. It's been very hard. It's been very hard. So, what I tell myself is And I have to tell myself over and over again, I do know what the truth is. I know what the truth is about my life. Have I been, have I been an angel? Absolutely not. Have I been some horrible, despicable human being? No. No. Do I deserve what I'm living? No one does. No one does. Did I deserve to come into this life to a woman who really hated me and has shown me that over and over and over again? You know what damage that does? But I, I was able to reverse the course do a 180 on my life, change my circumstances, but it was the stroke that left me vulnerable. It was all of the medical issues due to those fabulous medications put on the market as safe. I couldn't, it was truly the first time that I couldn't myself, and I'm not saying that all of what I accomplished was due to me solely. N no one accomplishes anything on their own. They all have help doing it. So I had friends, you know, I had a lot of support, emotional support to, you know, get through things. But when I needed help, hands-on help, when I got really vulnerable, that's when my family really came after me. So, it's been hard, you know, dealing with all of the lies that we are dealing with. Um, I hate them. They literally disgust me. I'm repulsed by, by the liars. I can't take it. My life got destroyed by the lies of my mother, my brother, my sister the lies that they told other people. I felt the shame and still feel it. You know, if it was so easy to just lift ourselves out of this and just forget about it and yada, 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 then everybody would be doing it and not a whole hell of a lot of people do it. But there are some of us who literally have to live it 24-7. And I do. Um, with no, no way out. And never did I think that I would encounter anything that I've lived since 2002. And I'm not just talking to those who emailed, I'm talking to those who leave comments. It is, um, I don't know what to make of this world. I just don't. 
uh, I go on, you know, a lot of what's going on with me is far more physical than emotional at this point. I, when I hit South Carolina four years ago, that's when I broke. That's when I just... The exhaustion, the stress, the frustration, my having to put down my dogs, which I've never recovered from. Never. That turned me. That... And I still don't understand. But I was... I was breaking. And without going into the details, suddenly I found myself crying every single day. Now, I'm not a big crier. I couldn't stop. It was like a flood. The frequencies were so on me all the time. Literally, I, I, would, I was feeling like I was being pressed down. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know where to go. I didn't know... I couldn't think. And all I knew is I was now stuck in an area that I didn't know and had never been in an area where, well, I'm talking about since I left Great Barrington. Never, ever did I encounter a time when I had difficulty meeting people, getting a social network for myself almost immediately. And now I was finding, okay, you're a northerner, you can't go back to that liberal progressive network, but you don't belong anywhere. You literally don't belong here. You don't belong, you don't even belong in AA anymore. And you can't. You can't, you can't tolerate the people who refuse to grow up. You can't tolerate the people who laugh at you when you say something about what's going on in the world. You can't tolerate the people who shut you up. And they're in AA. But then you find that for the first time in your life, you're having an, an experience that you know that the people sitting in this room don't identify with. Because you're listening to them and they're talking about their families. And they still have them. And you're going through the hardest time in your life. And for the first time in your life, you don't have AA anymore. You always had AA where you could go. And what you did was so that you didn't have to burden any individuals. You always went to AA and shared honestly. You got it out. Now you don't have that anymore. And they're different. You know, they're not, they're not the kind of, they're not your people that you're used to. But you can't go back to your people and you don't have your dogs. And you keep trying. You brought other dogs into your life and you, you're, everything's changed. Nothing is the same. Nothing. But you're alone in it. And you don't know. You know, you keep meeting people and you go there and you go here and you go to this subscriber and you, and you can't make a life. And you are deeply depressed. Because everywhere you go, you get to see people who still have their life and they still have their home and they have their families and they have their father calling every morning and saying, I love you. And, you know, and everywhere you go, you get to hear what you used to have, though you never had the family, but you get to hear people talking about their life, but you, yours is gone. It's been obliterated. And most people don't even want to know that. 
They don't want to hear anything. You just have to make it. You just have to make it. There. You're living an entirely different way. You've never lived this way. Everything's new, which causes stress. But you can't let other people know. You have to just keep going and keep going and keep going every single day. Stay up, stay up, stay up. But you leave. Because not having a life, really, it's, it does something to you. So I understand some of you who left comments and some of you who have emailed. I do understand. I understand the fear. I understand what it feels like to live with no joy. No joy. I understand what it feels like to have had everything taken from you. And I understand the nature that used to bring you joy. And now you can't ignore the death that you see, the dying that you see. And no, that doesn't bring you joy. It hurts your heart. I don't know what this life is about. I really don't. I can't answer any of the big questions. I do know that it's important for me to keep going and keep doing the best that I can. Now, this is all I have. That's it. There's nothing else for me. And when your life is this every single day and you did need help and you didn't get it and things got worse and worse and worse and the family literally hates you every time you reach out for help, they hit you with such contempt or they don't. Why don't they? Because they're starting a manipulation. That's going to really make your life far worse. And you have so many experiences like, some of you may remember when I lost my wallet in Michigan the whole experience in Michigan was very terrifying. My going to his subscribers and my leaving there and too afraid to go back. My car was in the Honda dealership because it wasn't starting. They said that they could fix it. So the part that they got was defective. Now, I'm being told that my car is not going to be fixed until the next day. Where do I go? What do I do? So I have a, a loaner from Honda, and it's a van. It's two degrees in Michigan. I have my dogs, and I go to Walmart, and I buy a blanket. And I look at the manual and I figure out how to get the seats out, the back seats, so that I can, you know, just lay in the back of this van. This is my life. You know how hard I worked to get sober, to recover from bulimia. A kid who started cutting school in first grade, never went to a graduation left high school, bottom of her class, the stupid one, 
21, get into AA. Go back to college, non matric, and had to have an awful lot of help to keep going. And then I become matriculated. Then I get a scholarship to Smith College. Then I go to law school. And, and while I'm going to college, I'm having to take, I'm having to get tutored in basics like algebra, algebra for statistics and, and also go to therapy because I could not have accomplished everything that I wanted to accomplish if I didn't work on myself because I had, you don't grow up in such violence, abuse, narcissism, alcoholism without an awful lot of issues. So I did all that work simultaneously. So yeah, it's hard to take when everything that you've worked for is gone, destroyed. And then your own family makes sure that you never get back up again. Because you're the scapegoat. So, it was very... No, I don't know what life is about. Um, but this has always been my life. I've, yeah, I, I could laugh a lot. Yes, I was somebody who had fun. But I was also very serious. So, I've been doing this since, God, my entire adult life, into politics and into uh, geopolitics and what was happening in the world. So this kind of comes second nature to me. and. And so now when I'm feeling my limitations around this, that's when I'm starting to feel like, okay, what, if this goes, there's no point to my life. Seriously. You know, as much as, you know, we can relate with one another, to one another, feel a certain bond, you're not in my life. And I'm not in your life. So the cyber world has terrific limitations in terms of relating with one another. You need to be needed in this life. You need to be wanted. I don't have that. My dogs were my family. And they gave me purpose. And I couldn't, do you know, for years, I couldn't, it was hard for me to even look at people with their dogs. I couldn't go into supermarkets. I, could, I still can't walk down dog food aisles. It doesn't leave when you don't have a life and you have no resources left. None of this stuff goes away. It just hurts. You go on, but it just hurts. And for me, what I did by putting down my dogs was Anathema. It was, it was against everything, everything. 
It was against me. But to tell you the truth, I was broken. I was scared. I already was feeling the, you're not going to make it. So what happens to your dogs if something happens to you? What happens? They were both rescues. German Shepherd was incontinent, had an awful lot of issues. And while she was beautiful, I could not see another person like me taking on all of those issues. And my other dog would have been put down. She had bit nine people. Not badly, obviously, but she had... S she lived in a shelter her entire life. She had so many issues. So they were both special needs dogs. And I got so scared. I begged, begged my sister-in-law for help. I said, please, I can't, because I'm... No, 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 no. And I knew my time I had already gotten vertigo. I was thinking what I am still thinking when you fall and smash your chin on the concrete. Those are the moments when you're going, wow, okay. One of the reasons why I've left people, subscribers in their homes, was because I was afraid something would happen, like Marlene's. I got so sick there, and I realized it was the smart meter, and it was the Wi-Fi, and it was how heavily uh, electromagnetic was her home, and, and I... Every day I was feeling, oh my God, I can't, the exhaustion and everything. And so much has happened that it's impossible to talk about. But I, I would think to myself, Jesus, if something happens to me, then the burden is on Marlene. If something happens to me, then the burden is on wherever I go. And these are not, I'm sorry guys, I understand that you call me friend and whatever, but you're subscribers and you've reached out and everything, but look at it from my standpoint. I'm the stranger that comes into your life. I'm not well. And every day I have to pretend I'm okay. And I know I'm not okay. And then I think to myself, you've already had a stroke, girl. <laughs> Your career was destroyed by it. You do have a lot of medical issues. What the hell are you going to do if something happens? You can't park yourself in somebody's life and become the burden that you've always been told you are by your family. And then South Carolina, I do become that burden in somebody's life. This has been very, very difficult. And when I would hear a lie, I'd lose it. When I would hear myself being talked about in a way, that was a lie because you happen to, well, we all have our issues and some people have this issue where they have to be saintly or martyr-like and oh, they're helping out that homeless woman. But what you hear is not the truth. Being told to somebody else, another person that you know and you really like and now and now you're living with family.
your family has done this to you your entire life and now other people are doing it to you and you're like, okay. You need to see something get better. You need to trust someone. And what you encounter are more and more people that you can't trust. It's I do understand. And it does suck. And everybody's life is different. And you get those people who have their own issues telling you that you have to work on your gratitude. They haven't lost. They still have their home. They still have, you know, their family. They have a spouse. They've got their dogs. They've got their job. They have it all. And you have to hear from someone that you've never even met and they don't know really what you're living because very often you're talking and you say something about your life and they identify and then they interrupt and then they start talking about their life and their life and their life. And then they start telling you what you need to be doing and you're like, you know what, I can't do this. But you don't want to get into it with anybody so you're trying to navigate all of this craziness within the awake crowd and all you have is craziness. You know, you go for years realizing, wow, okay, the state is going to be picking up, you know, when you die, the state, your taxes will bury me. The state. And all of these things kind of go through your mind and, and they shock you and you go, wait, what? What? My existence, I have none? So when I die, no funeral, the state, now I don't care. But all of this is coming to you. And it's like, you're really living this. You don't exist. Your family has literally, they don't want you. It's hard. It's very hard. It's very painful. It's brutal. And then, of course, you also have people who look at you and say, well, you look fine. And you can post these videos, so you're fine. And you're not interested anymore in having to defend yourself. You're not interested in talking to people who, if they can't hear what you're saying, you can't do it anymore. You can't have people in your life that lie and won't look, won't look at their own problem with lying. But they're the awake crowd. They're in the awake crowd and they're, you know, they're ranting and raving about the lying that the globalists do but they don't care about their lies. You realize that people who are comfortable just won't do a thing to change themselves. You know that we're pretty much gone when you've met so many, so many. You've lived a completely different experience than anyone that you know. You've been driving around the country. You've been staying with subscribers. And you know 
that we're a messed up people. Even those in the awake crowd all have their issues. Incapable of engaging in this fight because of their own personal issues. Those who talk a big game about, oh, they're going to do this and they're, you know, fighting this and even some outright lie about things that they're doing. And you're thinking, you're in their life. Why are they outright lying? And they're doing it in front of you and you know they're lying. And why don't they have the awareness to recognize that you know the truth? And you realize... They don't have any self-awareness. Everything is about their ego. Everything is about approve of me. Everything is about I got to be liked. So when you see this over and over and over again and it manifests differently, you realize that okay, we don't, even within the awake crowd, have people who are capable of doing much except living the same old, same old. Incapable or not wanting to do the work necessary to change themselves. Then you got an awful lot of people who are drinking away their free time and smoking the pot away their free time. And I don't have any problem with smoking pot. I have a problem with that pot. The effect is, well, Things are fine, so I'm just going to be hanging out. You know, there's a time to chill, and then there's a time to get up and act. So yeah, I know. I know that... I needed to get somewhere where I could create a life. I needed to get somewhere where people were engaged and I kept trying and trying and trying. But I needed to do it slowly because I have my own limitations and I have my own physical problems and which just kept mounting because I, kept, I couldn't get to a place where I could create a life. And then you hear from people who have never lived what I've lived but they think Oh, come on, you're just making excuses. If I was somebody who just sat around making excuses, I'd be dead. I wouldn't have gotten sober. I wouldn't have recovered from bulimia. I wouldn't have done all of that work. I wouldn't have gone back to school. I wouldn't have realized, Jesus, I've got to get tutored because I'm not going to pass statistics, and I aced it, by the way. I wouldn't have kept going to therapy. I wouldn't have kept going to AA meetings. I wouldn't have kept doing the work necessary to keep growing. So no, I'm not somebody who just sits around and make, makes excuses. I did everything that I could to get out of this circumstance. And I got myself trapped. So did I get myself trapped? No, my family actually trapped me. That is the truth. And no, I'm not somebody who points the finger and doesn't take responsibility for herself because I would not have gotten to where I am had I not taken responsibility for my life. But it doesn't matter Because you're living a life and no one knows you. Literally no one knows you. 
And the majority of the people that you bump into, they have no clue who you are. They don't ask. They don't. So you just live this kind of free-floating, rootless existence. And the only thing that roots you is right here. And right here, you do get an awful lot of support. Thank you, all of you who are loving and good and supportive. But you also get slammed. And when you've been slammed pretty much your entire life by this family, but you could deal with it because, well, you did have a life. But now you don't. Now you have no foundation, nothing. And you have no more reserve so it's kind of like you're getting hit and then oh you got to come across a comment that's that's you know supportive and will pick you up and it's it's a constant battle i know that only those who have lived something similar to what i've just said can understand most can't So, I do understand those who are who are alone, who are facing a lot of medical issues, who are barely making it and have nowhere to turn for help. I get it. You live every day wondering when is when when is the day that's just you can't anymore. The one thing that I have to do is every day I have to do the absolute best that I can. for my own soul. I have to know that I've done everything that I possibly could. And I know that there's going that who could possibly understand what I've lived, what I've tried to do, It's hard to know that now, you know, you'll eventually go out with absolutely nobody knowing you. You'll go out and a whole lot of people will make these presumptions of you. They think their presumption is fact. They think that they know you. Even those that I've met and you know, oh well I know, that some of them will lie about you. I've had people who, because, look, there are some things that I just can't do. So I would end up at somebody's home or apartment, and I would realize, okay, I can't, I can't live like this. And I know that I now have to go. And when I would go, the things that some people would say, like I stole a Matrix DVD. I stole a Matrix DVD and smashed, oh, what are those things, the car door opener? No. What, did you jump on it? <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, that's me. The only thing that I have left is my integrity. And it's been so destroyed by a whole lot of people right here in this awake crowd. It's been so trashed by my own family. So the only thing that I have is my word. 
And I take it very seriously. The only thing that I have is my truth. And I'm not saying that I'm always right. But what I am saying is that I did get on a road. And I do believe that the, there is no way that we can possibly get anywhere, anywhere, with so many people lying. And a whole lot of people lie. And I know what it feels like to have within this crowd trust, not even cared about, not And I know what it feels like to be betrayed in this crowd of truthers. You know, even those who know my life got destroyed by lies. They didn't care. They had no problem lying. And when I called them out, more lies. Because their ego, they've got a defend their ego. So all those people, oh, I love you and you're a precious friend and all that. Bullshit. Bullshit. If you can't, if you can't admit, take responsibility for, and clean up your lying, don't call me precious. Don't, don't, don't do it. Don't, don't say that you love me because you're all about you. And then you're going to start treating me like my family does because you can't simply take responsibility for lying. That's all. That's necessary. People lie, okay. It's not the lie that upsets me so much. It's the refusal to take responsibility for it. And when it happens over and over and over again, I am going to lose it. And then when you lose it, you get so... That's when they turn around and start destroying your integrity by claiming, oh, you're crazy because you've lost it. You got angry. You got really angry. You got rip shit because you were lied to over and over and over again. And you were made to feel like it was your fault. And all of the crazy making behavior that goes along with that. And then you're lied to outright, right smack in your face, and you lose it. And then they go, oh, well, you can't do it anymore. But they did exactly to you what your family did to you. And it's like another hit. It's hard. <laughs> and you know, the only way forward, the only possible way that we can ever manifest anything healthy in this country is if you guys do the work necessary to clean up your own act. And you've met, time and time again, people who will not do that. Refuse. One even said, don't want to grow. The awake crowd? And it kills you. You feel yourself getting more and more destroyed by it. You have nothing inspiring in your life, nothing to look forward to, no hope for your own life. You've got to see something going on here. you got to see some measure of health. And you can't find it anywhere. So, 
Yeah. I have not been a happy camper. I've had an awful lot going on. And I will continue until the fat lady sings. And I did not expect to be talking this much and I'm posting this because I know that a lot of you are hurting. And I wish that I had something magical to say, to lift your spirits. And I don't know what it is, what I could say to lift your spirits, other than just to give you my understanding of what you're going through. And to tell you a little bit about my experience, to tell you what I endure every day, and I just keep trying to do my best every day. But yeah, I know. I live feeling like my life's over. Now, a lot of you are going to say, oh, anything could happen. No, 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 no. Your trust has been so thoroughly destroyed, not because of that friggin' family with all of their outrageous lies. It's more the people that you called friends. They were the ones that really put the final nail in the coffin because you desperately needed them and they knew it. The thing is, you never let people get to say, well, I didn't know. They knew. And they drove that nail in quite happily. So, this is it for me. I'm not going anywhere. No, I can't leave my car. My car goes. I don't know what I'm going to do. I get worse physically. I don't know what I'm going to do. I live. This is not a home. I don't know what I'm going to do. But I know that I can't go anywhere else. I can't, I'm not going to be going anywhere else. My travels are over. And this now is my life. So, it's not <laughs> what one would call much of a life. Any comment? If you don't understand what I'm talking about, and if you think that you identify with me, then you tell me what you're living. You tell me if you're completely alone. You tell me if you never speak to family, but you want to. You want a family, but they don't want you. And they will do everything in their power to make sure that you never succeed and that you die. And you explain to me how your family has done that before you hit me with judgment. You had a stroke. You had fibromyalgia. You've got chronic fatigue. You are sensitive to the frequencies. You can't think. You can't figure things out, you're getting worse, you've got vertigo, you get dizzy all the time, and your vision's going, your teeth are going, everything's going, your car is still 
I, I cannot believe that my today again another thing. Okay, but you have nothing, nowhere to go, no one to call, and your family knows it because they monitor your friggin' videos because they don't want the truth out. But everywhere you go, you hear people talking about their family. And you have to shut up. And now you're afraid to tell anybody because you're done with all of the people who look at you with judgment because they don't understand what it feels like and what it can be real what it really can be coming from evil they don't get it so I'm sorry to all of those who are having a difficult time I'm sorry that it that this is the world this is the reality. There's an awful lot of people who understand what's going on, but they're too comfortable. And I understand that those are the people that you do have to watch out for because they will judge you. And I'm just so sorry that you, too, are having to live this because it is extremely painful brutal at times to get through. You know, the malignant narcissist and the ordinary liar, they will take from you that which is most important to you. They will beat your spirit down. They will stomp on your integrity by lying and lying about you. They will take away your reputation. If somebody needs to have their ego defended, then they will stand in defense they will lie about what they've done in defense, but they will also be looking for others to support their lies. And they'll find them easy enough. It is very hard. And I understand needing to check out. I understand life getting so unbelievably horrific that you can't go on any longer. Find people somewhere that can understand your experience. But if you are finding people that you know their experience is different from yours, don't go there. Don't go there because they will. Eventually, they'll get you. That's the hard part of living this. Very few speak about it because there is a lot of shame that you get to carry. It's not yours, but you get to carry it. Because these people just go on, you know. My family, my brother, my sister, my mother, they live fine. 
wealthy, It's very hard. To not be wanted. You're always, always feeling like there's something wrong with you. There's something wrong with you. You want to get out into the world and be just like everybody else. There's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing, but there's something wrong with you. And then you get friends that do the same stuff to you. They'll, they'll lie to you. And when you can't take it, they'll tell you something's wrong with you. This is the world that we live in. But there's nothing wrong with you. Yeah, we all have our issues. So I'm not saying that you're perfect or I'm perfect or you're an angel or I'm an angel. But there's nothing wrong with you. And a lot of, you know, the behaviors that you were relating to me via email, I understand. You get to a point where it's like you can't take any more. You can't take any more. And I know it. You get pushed to the edge. Then you get pushed over and you're just hanging on to a little, you know, stump. And you feel the stress and you feel the fear and the frustration and the desperation and, and you have no one. I get it. I get it. Yes, this is life for us. It's not pretty, it's not fun, it's not joyful, and you know what your future holds. I get it. <laughs> and that's the best that I can do, to say I get it. And I wish that there was some way out but not with all the medical problems and not with the circumstance. You need help. And I fully understand that you can't ask for it if you can't trust people. So, I'm sorry. I wish we were all closer together so that we could support one another. That would be great. Start our own, you know, meetings. But without resources, anywhere to bring this, it does eat you up. So what I, I guess what I'm doing is just telling you everything that you're feeling and thinking is appropriate considering your life experience. Anyway, sorry for going on. I'm just so sorry. I am so sorry. I am so sorry. <laughs>